It's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. Okay. Canelo exposed by Bivol probably presents some of the boxing games been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of Canelo exposed by Bivol subscribers. Now, you know. We gotta really, we gotta sit in and, and dig into this uh, this piss poor judging from Dave Moretti, uh, Steve Weisfeld, and Tim Cheatham. You know Tim Cheatham. You know these 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 establishment Vegas judges that <sighs> I don't know what they're on this fight. I mean I'm, I'm happy at least look at the bare minimum. I'm happy they at least had the right guy winning the fight. But I don't like the fact that when you look at the history books now, it's gonna look like it was a close fight when it wasn't a close fight. You know, they're messing with history. These judges have a big responsibility to score the fights correctly because they're messing with history and, and the perception of what people see on paper, okay? Now, this fight was not... All, all three judges ruled this fight a 115-113 fights, which means that if Bivol hadn't won the 10th round, if they would have just given Canelo the, the, the 12th round, then we would have had a draw, and Bill Bivol wouldn't even have the luxury in the moment that he earned by boxing one of the best perform performances we've seen in a while, he wouldn't have even have had that moment in the sun if Canelo Alvarez would have got the 12th round. But my thing is this, like, yes, they got it right, and I'm, 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 I'm appreciative for that, but it's the principle of the matter. It shouldn't have even been that close. It shouldn't even have been uh, that close. And when you, when, you look at, when you look at these scorecards, <sighs> what, what, what do I even begin? I'll, I guess I'll start with the, the first four rounds. Every single judge... All of them, Weisfeld, Moretti, Cheatham, they all gave Canelo the first four rounds. Now, I don't know what on God's green earth, what fight they're watching. I mean, they might they might need these. They might need these to uh, to start judging the fights. I mean, they're, they're big enough and they got a strong prescription. So, you know, I might, have to ha I might have to make them three of these next time. But, you know, that the first four rounds, right, I, I scored it. Uh, the first four rounds, I scored it 3-1 th for Bivol at the, the best you could do. It's 2-2 two because -two, there was one sw swing around in there. But that's it. No no, no better than 3-1 Bivol or 2-2 two -two even. You know, um, I, I'm trying to wrap my mind around it. Like, that's why this win for Bivol to me is so special because, like, it's one thing for Floyd to get a decision. Like, I know Floyd had the, the draw with, on, on one of the scorecards when he fought Canelo, but he was Floyd. He was already the established cash cow of the sport. He was already, like, a household name and had a, a lot of plugs and ties to the MGM brand. So of course, like, yeah, the 114 score 114 one scorecard was bad, but for Bivol, like it was really truly against all odds. It was truly against all odds. He was fighting against Canelo. He was fighting against the uh, the, the, the powers that be in boxing, the establishment, and he overcame all of it. He overcame all of it. He, he's so smart, man, to not let up in the 12th round. Cause I, I even told my dad when we were alive, I'm like, look, Bivol cannot let up in the 12th round because he's then putting himself at risk to either get robbed or, or take a loss on his record, you know? He, he could ill afford that. And this win right now, I, I, I truly believe this will go down as one of the all-time great performances in box history because of, first and foremost, the, the man he fought, Canelo. Second of all, because of uh, the run that Canelo was on heading into this fight. He hadn't lost. He has not lost for almost 10 years he hasn't lost a fight like on paper like yeah i thought the love can beat him the first fight but he hasn't lost on paper for almost a decade okay so when you factor all that in when you factor in who he is in the sport what he's done like at the box office you know selling tickets like i was i was there at cowboy stadium last year when he put seventy three thousand asses in the seats at cowboy stadium so i know what kind of money Cornello brings in I, I know i know i have an idea of what it's like when you're an opposing fighter coming to fight Canelo in America on the West Coast. It's, 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 it's a very, very difficult thing to deal with. But Bivol, this is one thing that I respect about Bivol so much is like, he's just a fighter, man. He don't care about the glitz and the glam. He don't care about the Instagram uh, fame. He doesn't care about none of that. He's a guy that when you cut it up, slice it and dice it, all he wants to do is fight and prove that he has the best skills in the world and prove that he's one of the best that he is the best practitioner of the sweet science when it comes to being in in, in, the, in the light of Void's vision. And nothing fazed him, you know. I, I remember so clearly when, when I was at the when I was at the Billy Joe Saunders Canelo fight last year and that was some, that was a spectacle. There were seven eighty thousand people in there. Almost nobody was there to Rupert Saunders. And uh, it was probably one of it was the loudest boxing atmosphere I've experienced thus far in my lifetime. Um it was a Cinco de Mayo celebration uh, uh, um, like the world's never seen before. 
and you know I, it got so crazy in there that I really I really I really felt bad for Saunders and it even looked like Saunders when he when he walked out to the ring he was feeling a lot of the pressure and, and the environment and and, and 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 as he should because there were 73,000 people in there you know you got to take, take a special man to be in, under that kind of crowd with that many people against you to to actually remain calm now Bill didn't have 73,000 but he still had the whole T-Mobile arena against him he still had that challenge and that's still a big challenge on its own and you know his his mentality and all the post and all the pre-fight interviews was that you know i'm gonna remain calm i'm gonna remain cool i'm gonna remain collected because i have a job in front of me he wasn't worried about how this fight would change his life or or, or anything like that all all he worried about was may the 7th um in the ring with canelo alvarez because he knew he understood and he really digested the fact that the canelo fans can't fight for him the, the boxing media can't fight for Canelo. Nobody can fight for Canelo. It's just mano y mano, one on one, and that's the beautiful thing about boxing. You could be looked at as a nobody, a guy that's boring, a guy that's an overlooked champion, and all it takes is that one big fight. All it takes is that one night where you put it all together, and you have the right to be called champion. You have the right to then be called a star and change your life and your family's life. And 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 fights like this, not just not just because people beat Canelo, but just any any fights in boxing where. A guy is overlooked or undervalued as a champion or a contender, and he and, and he goes in there against another pro, uh, high-profile name and puts it all together on that one night. That's the type of shit I live for. But you, you really gotta value this this win because it's not easy to go in Vegas and fight Canelo. Like Floyd, as great as he is, like I know he has no control of the scorecards, but as great as he was, he he didn't even get out the ring with a UD against uh, Canelo. So this was a win for the ages. I think boxing. Needs to have a, 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 a committee or something to oversee the judges because the fact that this was close, like the fact that we even had 115, 113 is, is very bothersome because that means you're going to have to do, you're gonna, if, if you can't knock out a fighter like Canelo, you're going to have to box as well as he did. And I just think like, okay, that's kind of screwed up because even though Bilbao was a champion, he didn't get treated like, 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 like the champion on the scorecards. Normally... The guy with the belt isn't the one that has to, you know, you have to, that that uh that 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 uh doesn't get the benefit of the doubt. Normally, you get, normally the judges give the benefit of the doubt to the champion. There's the old adage of you have to take the belt away from the champion. But what's crazy was, Bivol wasn't treated like that at all. He 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 basically like he Canelo was treated like the light heavyweight champion and not Bivol. And despite the circumstances, despite Everything in, that was going against him, he, he, he managed to find a way to win it. And that's why uh, Bivol, to me, you, you guys may say it's premature, but for me, he's already a Hall of Famer in my eyes. He's held the belt for a long time. He's defended it against guys like Camelo and Joe Smith and Chalemba and Pascal and guys like that. He has a great light heavyweight resume. And if he can go undisputed against the winner of Better Be versus Smith, then that's even like a, a, another feather in his cap. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about that judging because that judging was piss poor. Uh, it, it, it further goes to show you like, when you hear the establishment Vegas judges um, doing big fights like this, you know, Dave Moretti, Steve Weisfeld, uh, you know, th them people, you know, it's always a cause for concern. But uh, yeah, that, that, that's my little two cents about the judging. You guys let me know what you think. What was your scorecard? How did you score it? I, I personally had it. Um, I only gave Canelo two rounds. I, I, I gave Canelo two rounds. At the best, you could probably do three, but I only gave him two. So uh, give me your scorecards down below. Let me know what you thought about the judging. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on True School Sports, the home of boxing. If you made it this far, do me a favor and do yourself a damn favor. Hit that subscribe button and surely you will not be disappointed. You know, True School Sports bringing you the latest and greatest, the untouchable, you know, boxing content interviews news videos breakdowns live fight reaction extravaganza we've got a great community of, of people here boxing fans all over the world from america to the uk to australia and on and on and on so join the empire today hit that subscribe button take care and